work with Aqua Security. Um, we help enterprises secure their cloud native deployments. And I look after the open source tools that, that we build there. Uh, and I have been involved in, with kind of containers and container security for, for quite a few years now. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, I published the, this book with O'Reilly, Container Security. Uh, you can you know, buy this from all good bookshops, um, but you can also download a free electronic copy. So if you follow that link, um, you know, don't let price be an obstacle if you're interested in, in, you know, in the material that we're covering. So these are the different areas that I kind of have prepared that I think we can, we can talk about. Uh, we have a poll, so maybe we can open that poll so you can start voting on these options. And while you're voting, I'll just very, at a high level, talk a little bit about these options. So they're kind of in the order of things that you can do at build time through to, um, you know, at the end, things that happen at runtime. Uh, for most of these, I have some demos so we can uh, uh, explore which ones you, uh, you know, we can, we can dive into them. I, as we go through each one of these topics, uh, let's do Q&A about that topic because they're all quite different. And uh, yeah, so just go ahead and vote on whichever thing you think looks interesting to you. This is about how you configure your container to run. And uh, one of the things that you can configure, whether you're running you know, on the Docker command line or in your Kubernetes YAML is the privileged flag, which my friend Andrew Martin from Control Plane has described as the most dangerous flag in computing. And I think he may have a point there. That's probably a hotly contested title. In order to explain why it's so dangerous, I need to just step back and make sure um, everyone knows about Linux capabilities. So we have a tendency to think, you know, there's root, which has all the permissions and uh, unprivileged users uh, who don't have all the permissions. And that's kind of true, but the root permissions are actually uh, broken down into a much more granular set of um, permissions that are called Linux capabilities. And when you start a container, as we'll see in a moment, you get a set of these capabilities and you can change that set of capabilities. A lot of those capabilities are um, unnecessary for most um, applications. So I've got a few examples here. You know, I'm pretty sure you don't want to be running contained. Someone will come up with an exception, but most containers do not want to be messing about with the kernel modules on the host or changing the time on the host. Another example is that you, you may have good use, reasons to use is, is ptrace. Ptrace is incredibly powerful because it allows you to intersect what's going on on other processes and potentially even modify what's happening in other processes. So it's a you know, hacker's dream. There's all sorts of incredibly powerful things you can do. It's also useful for debugging. That's why it exists. But most of the time, your containers don't need these capabilities. So let's uh, move to a demo. Right, so if I run a container, um, I'm just going to run Ubuntu. And actually, I'm, sorry, I've got Zoom at the top of my screen, so I just need to do that again where I can see it. Zoom has obliterated what I can see. So I need to run with, I'm going to add. Oops, add all capabilities. And inside the container, I'm just going to take a look at uh, the proc directory, a status file for process number one inside this container. Don't worry too much if you don't really know what some of that terminology means. What I've done here is shown the effective capabilities flags that are set for processes inside this container. 
Um, you can see there's a lot of Fs. Basically, it's a set of bit flags. They're all turned on. So if I set all the capabilities, this is the kind of maximal set. So if I do the same thing again, and this time I drop all capabilities, and I run the same command again, and this time we see we get no capabilities. So depending on which ones you get set, it, it will always be somewhere in the range between zero and three lots of Fs. If I don't specify anything by default, and I do the same thing. It's some value in between the two. So I, I definitely don't have all the capabilities by default. In fact, Docker gives us a sensible subset. So that default is, is good to start with. If you're being very, very particular, you might want to specify a particular set of capabilities to reduce for each container, precisely the ones that you, you need. Um, that's a whole other topic. So let's run with, instead of specifying capabilities, I'm gonna set the privileged flag. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And, oops. There we go. And we can see that that's equivalent to turning on all the capabilities. We got the three and followed by lots of Fs. Okay, so that doesn't sound so bad. I mean, I've got all the capabilities. I've got the ability to do things like ptrace or install a kernel module. Um, doesn't seem any more dangerous than um, explicitly adding all the capabilities. Privileged also does one more thing. So uh, let's just uh, run by default again and have a look at what we can see in the slash dev directory. And there's, there are some devices there. There are some things mounted, some devices mounted into the container. So let's exit out of that. I do the same thing with privileged and we look at the devices. There are a lot. And I apologize for the color scheme here. I don't know what's happened there. With the privilege flag, we have access to all of the devices on the host. So if I wanted to, if I have the privilege flag, I could do things like reformat the disks on the host. This is definitely not something you want containers to be able to do. So any container run with the privileged flag if that container were to be attacked, if an, uh, a hacker were able to get control of that container, if they've got the privileged flag, they can, you know, completely game over. They have access to everything on your host. So that is why uh, you can consider that flag to be uh, you know, the most dangerous flag in computing. And more importantly, you do not need privileged in order to be root. You're root by default in a container anyway. This is one of the reasons why it's dangerous, not just because of how powerful it is, but because people have a tendency to think, well, uh, if I'm not, if privileged means, people tend to think that privileged means I'm running as root, and therefore they assume that if you're not running with privileged, you're not root. And that is not true. By default, you are root, and your root on the you, it's the same root used on the host as it is inside the container. 